All right, welcome back. Next uh, chapter of this build. Now that the front end's apart, and at the end of the other one, I left off just making that top brace for the steering rack mount. Uh, starting to clean up the frame. Uh, not going crazy. Just wire wheeling all the surface rust off and cleaning things up for some paint. Not going to go uh, crazy with paint because I'm not doing a frame off. I have to keep reminding myself. I'm just used to completely blowing these things apart and putting the frame on a rotisserie and cleaning it all up and painting the whole frame and painting everything. And I'm just not doing that on this car. <laughs> it's just not, it's not going to happen. So I'm just cleaning everything up nice for paint to, uh, to get where I need it so things aren't rustier than they need to be. Uh, what I'm using most of the time is a cheapo Harbor Freight grinder and these cup brushes. And another uh, word of caution, if you use these, make sure you're wearing heavy pants like jeans and a good junk shirt and junk clothes that are heavy because all of these wires are going to end up in you. And when you're done, that's what the brush will look like. Every one of those little wires is going to come flying out of this thing at a million miles an hour and stick in you. So don't do this in shorts in a tank top unless you're really a sadist. Maybe some people are. I don't know. I'm not. It's not real fun picking them out, but whatever. All right, so I'm going to get back to uh, wire wheeling this thing, getting myself disgustingly dirty. All for what? Some paint under an old Buick. Whatever. Oh yeah, and the most important thing, <laughs> not just heavy clothes, get yourself a full face shield so you don't be picking wires out of your eyes. All right, that's enough for that public service announcement. All right, getting the frame cleaned up. And uh, one other thing I forgot I wanted to do is box in the top of these engine mounts. Basically just gonna make a piece, goes from the top and then angles down to around here so there's still room for the engine mount to fit in there but it'll give just a little bit of even extra strength to it even though they're not going anywhere so uh i think we'll do that first and then move back to uh working on this frame all right as usual using cardboard to make a template to box in the uh, first motor mount passenger side and Trace it out onto a piece of scrap steel. This is still left over from the C10 trailer that I got the rear suspension from. So the uh, purchase that keeps on giving. No sense using brand new steel. If you've got old steel, it's still good. Nothing wrong with it. Let me get that cut out. Uh, top plate just make sure it fits in between there and then uh, the line is a bend line where one half is gonna have to bend downward now this is pretty heavy plate my uh, the only bender I have is for sheet metal it's not gonna bend this so what I'm gonna do is score it with the cutoff wheel maybe halfway through Put it in a vise, bend it over, and that'll uh, make it bend straight and uh, works with the tools that I have. So let me get that done and see how it fits. All right, there's the high-tech bracket, ready to go. It's going to weld a bead on the inside where I had made the cut to bend it and set it in there and burn it in. Alrighty, one side done, one side to go. Okay, second mount is done. Trying to blast right through this stuff. Uh, one other thing while I was climbed in there was I trimmed back a little bit of a section there on that lip of the firewall that was a little bit close to the head. 
So we cut that back and I also cut the limiter off the steering column. On the bottom of that bracket there, there was a little tab that was limiting how far down you could move the shifter. And uh, I'm gonna try to get this all the way down into low one with the factory shifter, so I need as much throw as I can get. So without any other mods, hopefully that'll be enough once I make the linkage, but that did have to get trimmed off. And that is it, I think for now, for cleaning up this frame. I think it's ready to just get some uh, little bit more wire brushing, not a whole lot, and then uh, time to spray it. And then move on to the front suspension. First thing I'm gonna do is remove the lower ball joint. Some of this information Obviously, it's only good if you have a Jaguar suspension, but this suspension is uh, so easy to retrofit into older stuff that it's, I'm surprised it's not more popular. Probably people just don't know about it. But anyway, I'm going to replace the lower ball joint. It's a bolt-in. It just has some locking tabs on the, the bolts. So we'll just bend those back. Out of the way. Okay, get the bolts out. Nope, not with that. They're tight. It's the ratchet on those bolts. They're tight. So I just cracked them loose. Things flopping all over the place. So, just going to get these four bolts out now, that they're loose. Okay, there's a the locking tab. Gets reused on the next one. All right. Give this a whack. And, look at that. Now, this is what's called a uh, three-piece ball joint. This is how the factory uh, Jaguar lower ball joints were. It's actually rebuildable. So it has the lower bottom, the ball, and there's a race that's inside here that we're going to knock out. The reason we're going to knock that out is the replacement ball joint is from the later XJ40 platform, and it's a one-piece ball joint. So you get rid of all this, bolt in the one piece, and you're good to go. So one thing uh, I said, I know people have missed, the, uh, they didn't know about this race being inside here, and they just took these pieces out and tried to bolt the XJ40 jo uh, joint in there. Doesn't work. So got to knock that race out. So... Get this tilted and braces so out. Out of here. Here's what it looks like. This was knocked up into the spindle. Just drove it out with a long homemade punch, and she's out. So all these parts here are all going to be garbage. Even had shims. You had to shim these things to get the correct play. All gets thrown away. Don't have to worry about any of that. So I'm just going to hit this with the uh, wire wheel, clean up this spindle, and I'll show you the new ball joint. Gave the uh, spindle a quick wire brush. Gave it some paint. Clean it up so it looks pretty. Here's the new lower ball joint very tight which is what you want and it also came with new hardware because this flange is actually a little thinner than the original three-piece setup so very simple to install just put it right, in so it came with the uh, new bolts as I said a little shorter and I have the locking tab to use also with them and the locking tab just has little pieces that have been up now this has been 
Looks like it's been used multiple times, so the tabs are actually not all there. So I think I'm just going to get the threads started and then put some thread locker on them as well. All right, so got all four bolts uh, started in there because I'm missing, missing one of my lock tabs. I'm going to put a little, whoops, a little bit of uh, blue Loctite on these threads anyway, just because the one bolt doesn't have its tab, but it's okay. Let's see this. this is hard to deal with because it's moving all around. Let's see, just put a little bit on each one. Got a little bit extra on that one. <laughs> oh well. All right, I already started these by hand. Gonna spin them in lightly. Make sure everything's all good. Crank them down. Okay. Then I'll grab my hammer Bend up the tabs that I do have left. Three of them. Two of them. <laughs> That's why we have Loctite. They don't last forever. You can only use them a few times. All right. Anyway, there's our brand new ball joint installed. Looks good. Next, set it on the car. All right, before I put the spindle back on the car, I want to get, take care of the uh, upper control arm, which is a greasy mess. So hit this with the wire brush, get this ball joint out, and show you something else neat about the Jaguar upper control. All right, after a couple minutes with the old uh, death wire wheel and what will get you dirty forever. Uh, as a quick look at the upper ball joint setup. It's a bolt in, two bolts. And also what you see here, there are shims between the ball joint and the size of the control arm. This is actually where caster is set on the Jaguar. So like on a GM uh, with the regular, you know, independent suspension, you would have shims behind the upper control arm. And you still have those on the Jag, but they're only used to set the camber. So if you have shims on one of these bolts, you'll have the same amount on the other bolt. You never vary them. On the GM, you vary them to set your caster, not on the Jaguar. On the Jaguar, you actually move these shims from side to side, either from here to here or here to here or vice versa, to move the ball joint and set the caster. But since I've already added uh, extra caster into the uh, cross member when I installed it, I laid it back a couple degrees. I'll set this even pretty much as it is now. There's two shims on each side, and that's how I'll set it back. Okay, so I'm in the middle of the upper control arm rebuild. Took it all apart. Uh, turns out I did have a worn out upper control arm bushing it was worn out right down into the metal there that rubber piece section there should be all the way around it isn't pretty rare uh, I've only had one other Jag where I actually had bad a bad bushing and it was only the one on this one too one good one bad so whatever I just replaced them all I have spares here so that was no big deal um, these Jag Suspensions are nice because you don't need any special tools to rebuild these things. This whole thing just comes apart. Uh, even these bushings, no press needed or anything. You just hold the this cross center cross with a rat with a wrench, spin the nuts off, and the bushings pull right out from there. No press or anything needed. They just come apart into two pieces like that. So easy to replace. 
Same thing with the ball joint. It's just going to bolt in there with the shims on either side, like I said about the uh, for setting the caster. It's these guys here. Be two on each side and a couple bolts. And that's all there is to the upper control arm. So we get that back together here. shims are notched so they can go in after the bolts are in here you can see how this can move back and forth that's how they set the caster Two on each side on this one. Like that. All right, my wrench. Tighten these up. Put the right socket on there, you fool. So that control arm bushings I uh, won't tighten these up all the way until the car is on the ground with the weight on it never tighten up uh, control arm bushings upper or lower until you have full weight so they're just snugged up right now because you don't want to tighten them up and then set the car down and have it twist on the bushing you want it to be centered where the ride is ride height all right Bolt this on the car. Okay, back at it. Upper control arm installed. Nuts on the uh, bushings are just snug, so this will move nicely. Get the hardware set where I can get it. All right, so we got our bottom ball joint. Not on there. Upper ball joint. That in there. All right. Except I forgot some extra hardware I have to put here on the bottom. got is, this is a bracket for the lower shock mount and also bracket for the sway bar and this all goes together on this lower ball joint. Let me get that out of the way. Like that. Oh, there's a washer. That. And that. All the way through. Got to put any C's on them. I put any C's on everything. Just in case. I ever have to take it back apart again. Makes things so much nicer. Even though this is all painted up nice now. There we go. Alright, now I can just crank down on the nuts there for the ball joints. And we'll continue on.
pressure on that. The lower one here, I had to put a jack under it, this and lift up the ball joint to seat it into the spindle to lock it in so I could turn that nut. When I first started turning it, the whole thing was spinning. So this because there's no pressure on anything. So sometimes you have to use a jack to force the, the ball joint into the spindle. That's on any car you're doing this on. The upper, actually it spun right on, no problem. Okay, so they're all done. Next will be put the uh, dust shield back on. Okay, moving along with the assembly on the front suspension. After the uh, spindle was... Huh, the pressure's on. After the spindle was bolted up, put the uh, dust shield back on, and the uh, caliper is on with one bolt right now because the other bolt for the caliper and the other bolt in the spindle there are for the steering arm which has to fit inside there. And I put a new uh, brake hose on, just because I always have, I've never not replaced them. It's just not worth it for the 10 bucks or whatever a hose costs. I mean, it's obvious this car had uh, calipers replaced and the pads were replaced and all that stuff, but I have no idea how old the hoses are. So put a new brake hose on. And that's as far as I'm going to go with this side right now. I'm going to get the other side to the same point, And then I have to get the steering rack done because the steering arms are still attached to the rack. And I got to get the steering arms in here to finish this up. So let me get the uh, other side done. And I'm going to come uh, back. I just wanted to say, and I'm not turning this into the Jaguar channel or anything, but if you are taking one of these uh, apart, to rebuild it while it is very simple take pictures because it's quite the engineering uh, marvel <laughs> if you want to say that everything is uh, kind of like a puzzle pieces are laying over top of each other bolts go through multiple pieces and everything has to be assembled in order for it all to work otherwise you have to take things back apart to put things back together so take pictures Write it down, whatever you need to do, but it's easy. But if you just have a pile of parts on the floor, sometimes it can get confusing on how it all goes back together. All right, that's enough of that. We'll get back to it. Okay, both sides of the suspension are assembled up to the point of needing the steering rack. Got all the new ball joints in, the new control arm bushings, new brake hoses and just ready for the uh, next step to be the steering rack and the steering arms. So I cleaned up the, uh, the rack. The only thing I have to do with this is I wanted to said replace these uh, rubber bushings with polyurethane to improve the uh, handling. Keeps the steering rack from moving when you're turning the steering wheel when those bushings wear out. Uh, I've already pressed out two of them. Um, Normally I would do this with a long 5 16 uh, carriage bolt, but I must have used my other one at some point because right now all I found was a 3 8 which is too big to fit through the hole in the bushing. So I'm gonna do this in two steps. First thing I'm gonna do is drill out the rubber around the center sleeve and the outer sleeve so that I can get this um, steel sleeve out of the bushing. Then that'll leave a big enough hole to use the 3 8 carriage bolt and press out the outer sleeve. And then it'll look like that. So first thing I'll do is drill out that bushing. All right, I'm just gonna drill this out. Pull the sleeve out. Next, to get out the outer sleeve of the bushing. Okay, to get the outer sleeve pressed out of there, 
First, you've got to find a socket that's about the same diameter as the sleeve or a little bit smaller. In this case, happens to be a 13 16 Fits very nicely in the rack, so I know it's not going to hang up. So that's going to be on this 3 8 bolt. Like that. And maybe the other side, because then you need a big socket, something big enough that the sleeve can come out. And looks like it's not going to fit on the other side, so it looks like we're going to be pressing it out in this direction. Alright. Then it's just a washer and a nut. So the whole thing is just like this. A socket to push the sleeve, a socket really big to receive the sleeve inside of it, and a nut. Just tighten down that nut and it'll press that right out of there. Snug up the nut, get the socket on the Pushing that we're pressing out nice and centered on there. Grab a wrench. Let's see if it starts moving. It slipped. Recenter the socket. All right, well, I couldn't do the socket method yet on this because. I need to press the bushing out this way. It turns out there is a little lip on the, the bushing shell, which means this socket would need to go here. Not enough room for that. So I'm going to take a hacksaw and cut a slot in the sleeve and just collapse it. So that'll work. Just have to be careful. I don't want to cut into this mount and I don't want to hurt this mount. So cut a slot in it, relieve it. It should be easier to easier to come out that way. All right, well, I got the last bushing out. I didn't have the camber rolling because I was taking my time with the hacksaw, cutting the sleeve, sneaking up on it, because I didn't want to cut into the, the uh, mount. So I just snuck up on it and then collapsed it with a punch and a hammer. And it came right out. So, this would look like after knocking the sucker out. Nothing special. In the garbage. So, next we have these. I think I bought these off eBay some years back. Uh, Nolathane, in case anybody's doing one of these things. Just polyurethane bushings for the Jaguar rack. Real simple, much easier to deal with than the originals. Two halves and a sleeve. That's it. Just put them in. Sleeve in. And that's it. A little bit easier to deal with pressing in original bushings. And these don't wear out like the other ones either. And that's it. This rack is ready to install. Alright, steering rack is going in. Just a couple uh, pieces of information for those of you who may go ahead and Install one of these Jags. Um, if you do use those polyurethane bushings on the rack, on the, uh, rack mount, uh, you can remove this spacer. With the factory uh, bushings, this spacer actually fit inside this mounting bracket here to take up a little clearance on the with the factory bushings. But with the polyurethane, they're wider and they fill the uh, the mount up completely. So don't need that anymore. The other thing is about the spacer on the steering arm. I probably mentioned this when I was taking it apart because it's something that gets missed a lot. Um, 
when these are originally mounted up from the factory, you can see the steering arm here, and everything's black, so it's kind of hard to pick things out, but the steering arm has this bolt here that goes through it and through the caliper into the spindle. Now, when you bolt up the steering arm, it has two bolts, one on the top and the bottom one, this steering arm doesn't fit flush against the caliper. When you tighten the top bolt and look here, there's actually a small, and we're talking thousands of an inch gap, between the steering arm and the caliper. And when this was originally assembled from the factory, there was a little shim that went in there to take up that space. If you run across one of these where the calipers have been off, most likely those shims are gone. They get lost, people don't know they were even supposed to be there. So, you want to put them back and they were gone on this car i don't know if i can get under here with the light and look but there is a small gap between the steering arm and the caliper and can i get a video of it i don't know if i can it's right in that area there you can see it talking thousands of an inch here and you don't want to just put the bolt in and crank that down you want to Put a shim in there and you can make one out of a washer. You just grind it down. In fact, that's what I did on this side. Took a 7 16 washer and you can see it there. And then you, where is it? There it is. Between the steering arm and the caliper. And it's basically just a 7 16 washer that I ground down even thinner than it was to make that work. Uh, just, you know, again. Worthless information if you're not using a Jaguar front end, but if you're bought one and it's complete and original when you take it apart Don't lose the shims and you'll know if it's original because there'll be safety wire uh, Also from the factory this bolt and this bolt both caliper bolts were safety wired as well. You can see the holes in the bolt uh, No one ever puts that safety wire back So if the safety wire is still there most likely yours has never been messed with and those shims will still be there So don't lose them so that is that. So the steering rack is in. I just got to make the shim for the other side. And uh, that'll be the end of that. I think I'm going to end this video here. I think that's enough for now. And when we come back, finish up this front end, uh, put the front springs in, put the front sway bar on, reconnect the steering. And I think that will be it for the front suspension as far as assembly. And then we'll move on to the next step of this project. Oh, yeah, got to put the shocks in, too. So we'll get that done. All right, thanks for following along. If you're following along, hope you're liking it. And uh, hope you learned something, even if it's worthless. <laughs> See you on the next one.